Elizabeth Freeman was born into slavery sometime around 1744 under the ownership of Peter Hodgebow in Claverack, New York. She was named Bet. Bet was given to Hannah, Hodgebow's daughter, and her husband John Ashley when she was around seven years of age. Bet was a very determined woman who possessed a strong will, and she often clashed with Hannah Ashley, who often imposed her strict upbringing on Bet and the other slaves. Around 1780, Hannah charged at one of the slaves with a heated shovel. Bet jumped in the way to block the blow and received a bad burn on her arm. As a symbol of her mistreatment and evidence of her neglect, Bet allowed her wound to heal uncovered so that people in the community would know how Hannah treated her slaves. John Ashley, Hannah's husband, was a very wealthy judge who was highly influential in his community. Due to his strong influence, many members in the community often came to his home to engage in conversation and political debates. According to several different accounts of Bet's life during this time, it is said that she became inspired when she heard the words of the Declaration of Independence and the Massachusetts Constitution. It is noted by many accounts that the following words from the Massachusetts Constitution is what prompted her to seek legal counsel and file for freedom in court. All men are born and equal and have certain natural, essential, and unalienable rights, among which may be reckoned the right of enjoying and defending their lives and liberties, that of acquiring, possessing, and protecting property and fine, that of seeking and obtaining their safety and happiness. Motivated by these words, Bet soon enlisted the assistance of a young and up-and-coming lawyer named Theodore Sedgwick. Sedgwick agreed not only to take on her case, but he also agreed to take on the case of Brom, another slave owned by the Ashleys. In 1781, the case of Brom and Bet versus Ashley was heard by the County Court of Great Barrington, Massachusetts. Arguing that the Massachusetts Constitution rendered slavery illegal, the jury determined that Brom and Bet were not the Ashley's property. Bet and Brom were awarded their freedom in August of 1781, and they were also paid 30 shillings in damages. Soon after her victory, Bet changed her name to Elizabeth Freeman. John Ashley offered Elizabeth the opportunity to return back to his estate and work for wages, but she turned them down and chose to work in Theodore Sedgwick's home instead. She was affectionately known there by the Sedgwick children as Mom Bet. One of those children, Catherine Sedgwick, later wrote an account of Elizabeth's life. Although little is known about what happened to Brom, Elizabeth was well known throughout the remainder of her life. She died in 1829 and was buried in the Sedgwick family plot in Stockbridge, Massachusetts. Her gravestone included the following words. She was born a slave and remained a slave for nearly 30 years. She could neither read nor write, yet in her own sphere, she had no superior or equal. Her tombstone stands in the innermost circle of what is known as the Sedgwick Pie. Now the video that you just finished watching discussed Elizabeth Freeman and her fight for her own freedom in the courts of Massachusetts. Now what's critical for me in this video was how Elizabeth Freeman was illiterate. She couldn't read nor she could write but she was powerful enough to take what she heard at those tables when she was being owned by the Ashley household and she took that, went and found a lawyer and started her fight for her freedom and she won and was successful and lived a happy long life after that. That for me was very powerful. I hope you learned a lot in this video. Don't forget to like, comment, share, and subscribe. And I'll be back with another video, so stay tuned. Alright? Peace, family. Minister Malcolm, you have suggested that there are all kinds of movements in Harlem growing that you and I don't know about? Oh yes. Uh, frustration itself has been, has been sufficient all that was necessary to make you know what i'm saying as an artist i feel the same type of responsibility so it's not activism it's really just life